Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today, uh, it's um, March 4th. Oh no, April, April 4th, 2022. Oh my God, uh, time is flying. And, uh, but today I wanted to talk to you about data retention. Uh, very, a topic very dear to my heart, uh, very important. And I wanted to focus the, uh, my brain down here on, on recruiting. Okay, because so first of all, so a little bit of history, uh, mo mostly because of GDPR. Okay, let me let, let's just make things very simple. GDPR is a body of law, right, that uh, came into existence a few years ago uh, in Europe that offers very strict guidelines in terms of data. Okay, but without going into details. Puts a lot, put a lot of pressure on software, right? To offer the capabilities to manage and maintain uh, various data retention policies, as well as the ability for to meet some of the expectations, right? So, for example, if someone requests to see all the data that you have about them, you must provide that information within a, a, a particular time frame. And we can talk about that all day long for um, for many days, right? It's, it's very complex. But as it relates to success factors, right? Success factors is absolutely in compliance in terms of offering the tools so organizations can manage this GDPR. But here's here's one thing that I would even argue, like seven out of ten clients out there, first of all, don't know whether they're in compliance or not don't know how to use the features, and in many cases, don't even know if they, those have been enabled. And then three, a lot of the cases, the features are there, but you have to enable them, right? You have to configure them, actually. You have to configure them and then use them and then understand whether you're in compliance or not. And being in compliance actually can mean different things because in many aspects of the law, the law doesn't really tell you it's only what to do, but in, in many aspects, it's, it's really up for interpretation. Right? So, for example, what's the data retention policy? In some countries, um, you know, it's prescribed. In the majority of them, it's not. Right? It's like the it's like the, the most conservative approach. Right? So you always have to have a reason to have information. But then also there are countries in which it's conflicting, right? Um, or because you know, like if you want to have a global standards, it's very hard. Right. So, so anyways, without really going to different, going to a, getting into a rabbit call here, in, in terms of recruiting, right, there are two very important items that you need to keep in mind. The ability to purge um, applications and the ability to purge candidate profiles, okay? Again, these are, can you do it in the system? Absolutely. Can you schedule a job, right, that does it automatically? Absolutely. This is smart enough to obviously only purge when needs to be purged, of course, but in order to do so, you have to implement it, okay? So the, you have to implement the GDPR or the data retention uh, features, and then you have to configure it, okay? This is a configuration you have to do country by country and then schedule it, just like any other retention management purge. Um, and yeah, and have it running, monitoring it, right? But again, I, I, I've done a lot of work on this, especially as it relates to kind of proving the, to work councils and DPOs. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of the time uh, people, just because it's such an obscure, <laughs> for lack of a better term, obscure topic that, but not very many people know about it. And what's scary is that a lot of companies have no clue, like I mentioned earlier. Number one, whether they're in compliance or not. By the way, are they purging what they need to be purged? Uh, do they even know that they have the capabilities, right? Uh, I've come across several cases in which they don't even know that these features exist, so they pull data or they do things manually or workarounds, and then I guess that's fine, right? But it's a lot that goes on it. And by the way, I'm putting together um, a mini course that talks about all, all of that, right? Um, what is GDPR? 
in simple terms or as it relates to success factors, in particular HR data? What does it mean across the different modules? What are all the features that success factor offers? When to use them, how to use them, how to enable them? Um, as well as I'm gonna put there some guides, right? That help you have that conversation with your DPO or your legal team, as well as some of the decisions you're gonna make as an organization, such as what's our data retention policy for um, inactive applications, right? What's the definition of inactive application? The system actually gives you a couple of um, options for you to decide what's an active application, but also uh, I'll tell you what's a common practice, okay? Um, about it. So anyways, more to come on that, but uh, I'll share with you guys. Because uh, again, it's a topic that lots of people avoid. It typically it's not configured correctly. It typically it's not used. It might be configured, but not a schedule. Um, yeah, lots of negativity around it. Or at least that has been my experience. Hopefully that's not the case. I recognize that there are many organizations that are domestic, right? So the pressure is, is less. Um, and in some places like in, in South America might not even be a thing, I don't know. Um, anyways, that's what I have for today.